Hello, everybody, and this is Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a team member here today. She has her own podcast on her channel, and she is part of our podcast community, and it's Blanca Rodriguez. She has many hats. She is a massage therapist that focuses on canine dogs, and she also is a life coach, and she works with people and, help, and animals to help improve their lives, and today she wants to focus on talking about canine massages and how they can improve a pet's life. So let's talk about that. I'm really excited because I've heard about it. I've, you know, I've heard many people talk that there's a lot of benefits to giving your dog massages and, and it can help with many illnesses and, and many pains and aches. So tell me a little more about this. I'm very excited to learn more. Sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Stacey. I'm so excited to be here once again with you. So thank you for that. Canine massage therapy has been around since ancient times, since 27 BC to be exact. Wow. Any kind of animal massage started in China and then progressively it went towards India. And of course, with the passing of time, it went, it, um, even the Roman Empire had animal massage therapists. Julius Caesar used to take his massage therapist with him to war back in those days very ancient times he had epilepsy mm -hmm. and his massage therapist used to work on his very ferocious war dogs as well and by the time it came here to the u.s it was back well pretty recently back in the 1970s when equine massage was introduced to the US and of course years later canine massage therapy was introduced as well canine massage therapy is approved with by the AKC American Kennel Club as a very powerful tool for the quality of life of any dog no matter what age they are canine massage can be done from since they're puppies all the way, so it's time for them to cross the rainbow, is a very, very powerful practice. If anybody has received a human massage, I'm a human massage therapist as well for many years, the similarities are powerful. The benefits are very similar as well. Uh, very different because we, these are four-legged animals and they don't, they don't have pores. They don't have pores on their skin, but the mm. effects are equally powerful. That is for sure. Wow. Now, what are some of the benefits for a canine massage? Absolutely. Absolutely. Canine massage therapy helps tremendously with relaxation. Massage, well, the definition of massage for humans and canines alike is the manipulation of soft tissue or muscle with the purpose of healing or relaxation. Of course, massage therapy helps with many things, but canine massage therapy specifically helps relax the dog if the dog has separation anxiety, if the dog is scared of thunderstorms, of fireworks, July the 4th is yeah. practically around the corner. Right. These are moments when the dogs get very, very fearful. And I have had clients that their dogs have passed away because they were so feel fearful that they had heart attacks over it. So it's very helpful when these kind of events are happening. Fourth of July, New Year's Eve, that is very, very noisy out there. Yeah. It's excellent for dogs that are aging, that have atrophies, hip dysplasia, arthritis is excellent for dogs, for agility dogs, competition dogs, because they have accidents as well. It's excellent for dogs that have sedentary lifestyles that they never get out of the house yeah. because not having movement, of course, can cause major problems to the dog. It can lead to obesity. It can lead to so many other issues. And massage yeah. therapy is extremely powerful for that. And of course, dogs that are fearful dogs that are um that they have massive massive issues with abandonment neglect i used to i used to go to a no kill shelter for animals here in town i did my full internship there when i graduated from massage therapy school and the level of them of these poor animals receiving and being accepting of touch it was really, really remarkable. And it was definitely my honor to be able to go there in those cages in such a chaotic situation. And, and yeah. they will be 
more than welcoming to receive the touch of massage. That's how powerful massage therapy is for our canines and definitely for us. It seems like, you know, that um, canine massage therapy could really be good for all types of breeds of dogs. It seems like it could be beneficial for, for any breed. Is that true? Yes, yes, absolutely. From very small breeds all the way to the biggest breeds is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's excellent for dogs that are very nervous and edgy, a.k.a chihuahuas that they yeah. are all over the place dachshunds that they're very territorial of course with anything that has a lot of benefits they are the contraindications too as of please do not do massage in these situations and of course that has to be that something that we got to be very cognizant of and it can be rashes mm -hmm. fractures uh, post-surgical, unless it's approved by a vet, is very important to be aware of that. If they have allergies, if they have fever, if they have temper issues, they are not welcoming of people touching them. That yeah. is something to really, really keep in mind because it could be a dangerous situation for the human. And it could be a situation that the dog doesn't even need because if a dog doesn't like to be touched, then don't touch the dog. It's just like us humans <laughs> that many of us are always like, oh, we love massage and you don't like a massage. How's that possible? Well, there's people that don't like to be touched and it yeah. will be a stress for them. Ex same exact thing with the animal as well. Yeah. And have you seen it help with many different conditions? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, have, um, I have had the joy and the honor to be able to massage dogs from the moment they are puppies. There, I had this specific puppy, a beautiful black lab that he was starting to be trained for agility mm -hmm. and they get hurt. They are wobbly when they are very, when they are very little. Yeah. And the moment that I grabbed that dog and started massaging him, it was all the way, according, the owner tells me that I still keep in touch with her all these years later. She tells me that the dog started being massaged from the moment he was a puppy and he never stopped being massaged because I taught her how to massage her dog. Yeah. And the dog won competitions, is an outdoor dog. He lives in a place where there's 10 acres. Uh, labs are outdoorsy dogs. They yeah. love to be outside. They love to mind their own business and don't do their thing. So it has been very, very powerful for the quality of life of this dog and all of the dogs, thankfully, that I have taken care of because they feel better. They feel more relaxed. And when they are in an environment where they feel good, everything works better because we are dog people and yeah. let's put the, let's put the things the way they are. When we have a dog, our lives go around the dog, not the other way around. Right. And let's remember canine massage is not petting the dog. Canine massage is not rubbing the dog. Canine massage is massage. We are taking care of muscle groups with the purpose of healing and relaxation. And it's extremely powerful and all dogs love it. I have taken care of puppies all the way to Great Danes, Rottweilers, Dobermans, you name it. I have worked on them all. And definitely the, the same, it, it's always the same reaction on their part. First, they are like skeptical about it. It's like, okay, let me see what this lady has to offer. And then at the end, they're like, no, they don't want to leave and they don't want me to stop. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. I, I, I love it so much. I can see <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when they get older, do they, it, it seems like when you get old, just like human beings, we get old and achy. It seems like a canine massage would be really beneficial as they get older too. Yes, absolutely. I have, um, I have massage many of my angels from heaven above on their senior years on when it's, unfortunately, and when they are in their end of life kind of stage, I have had golden retrievers, Labradors, Dobermans, Rottweilers, highly, highly active dogs that it's unavoidable. Yeah. In, in the dog world, they don't measure what could hurt them and what not. They are in for the moment, for the play, for the joy of the moment, and it causes many issues unfortunately on these amazing animals and 
this has been more of my calling than anything else. Senior dog massage. And it's, I've been chosen for it. I don't know why, but I love it equally. It's hard to lose my four-legged friends because the time comes. And of course, we create a bond that is unbreakable. But it, it is proven. And in my honest professional experience with senior dogs, it really, really helps them with quality of life those last few months or few years, whatever the time that they have left, it helps them feel better. I had a golden retriever that he couldn't even climb into the sofa anymore. His mother was devastated because of it. And when I started massaging him on a consistent basis, consistent basis, there were days that he will jump to the sofa. And I had the blessing and the honor to massage him all the way to end of life, all the way to he crossed the rainbow and he received it with the same love as the first time. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. And this is my favorite job. My favorite way of massaging is definitely canine massage. No offense to our humans. I love my humans too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but massaging the dog is my favorite thing to do. Definitely. Wow. That's amazing. And, you know, is it good to start when they're really young? Is it? Yes. Is, yes, absolutely. As, absolutely. Because they will get used to it immediately. And no matter which massage therapy therapist will come the dog's way, the dog will be totally aware. It's like, okay, this is massage and this is going to be beneficial for me because they know it, they smell it, they feel it. And yeah. it's an excellent thing. Now, I have massaged dogs for the first time when they are 10, 11, 12 years old, and it has been a process of them getting to know me, right. of me approaching them, reaching them, creating that bond. Yes. The majority of the dogs that I have worked with, I create a bond instantly. Right. But there's other breeds and other dogs that they are skeptical and they're like, no, I don't want anything to do with you. And no, and it's like, a, you just give it some time, give it some time. And I, I learned this um, quite a bit when I was in the no kill shelters mm -hmm. that some of the dogs will be instant bond. Let's do it. Come on over. I'm here. And there were other dogs that I will have to go sit on a corner give him a treat, yeah. be very gentle on um, my approach because there may be a case that they were abused in the right. past. We just don't never, we just will never know. But yeah. it seemed to be the case. Um, my beloved that she, we, we lost her almost two years ago. She was definitely the one that let me know that I should be doing this. I went for a course of learn to massage a dog. I did it. I came home. I massaged her and she gave her total stamp of approval and I never stopped massaging her all the way to the day of her passing and she was an abused dog when she was a rescue and she was an abused dog she she would be very very scared of seeing a broom seeing a mop and I'm like oh something bad happened with you and a mop and a broom yeah. and but little by little she was really she got really really comfortable and when that door opens it'll never close that is for sure and that's the way our dogs are yeah. and we are very very blessed and lucky to have them in our lives that is for sure oh 100 percent. i think yeah when dogs, even when they're abused like when they find people that they can bond with and they can trust you know um they 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 can you know um create that a, a nice relationship with with that with that person and, you know, mm -hmm. overcome a lot because sometimes with their proper training, you can't overcome, you know, some of the abuse when you're in those rescue, um, you know, if you have the proper training. Absolutely. Is, is, Absolutely. There, is there something that like, I mean, you were talking about how you taught the lady how to do some canine massages with mm -hmm. her dog. Is there some things you can maybe teach the audience and things that they could do with their dog that would be helpful that the dogs would really enjoy? Absolutely, absolutely. And for this occasion, I have mm -hmm. a lovely demo dog here. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, I have a lovely demo dog here. And of course, he has a name. His name is Han Solo. And he is a lovely rescue. I rescued him from Amazon.com. And he's very happy, <laughs> he's 
very happy to live with me. So I pet him a lot. I give him a lot of love. But this, he is in a lame position. I have demo dogs that are, they are standing, they're sitting. And, but this, <laughs> this, uh, he is laying. And it's really, really cool because he's in the perfect position that many dogs assume when I'm massaging them. So this is really, really cool. And what I always teach you know this is these are the very basics of canine massage that anybody and everybody can do with their dog the first and, and most important thing about massaging your dog is that uh the human companion please be in a calm state yeah and a calm state because when you are calm your dog will be calm with you yeah. have a very nice environment of music there are many dogs that they love music there are plenty of dog go go to sleep dog uh playlist there, there's so many that i i put them all and they absolutely love it nice slow the volume can be low because the hearing of our dogs is much more powerful than ours there's certain there's certain breeds of dogs that they can hear something from 10 miles away yeah so that says it all and their sense of vision can be all the way for two to two miles away their sense of hearing we hear us humans we hear things from almost a hundred feet away right a dog depending on the breed they can hear things from a quarter of a mile away so this is something to take under consideration the dog doesn't need anything loud the more quiet the environment is the more comfortable your dog will be. And remember, you are the human companion. They trust you. They will be more than happy to receive what you are going to give them, especially if it, if, if it has to do with human touch, because dogs love to be touched by their beloved humans. So since this is your dog, when I, um, when I do these demos and on a dog that is not mine, I don't touch the ears. I don't touch the face. I don't touch nothing that has to do with the face because this area is prohibited for the dog. The dog doesn't love, they don't like to be touching the face, especially the ears. There's a lot of information going on here. So leave it alone. But if it's your dog and the dog is happy with you touching their ears, then fine. As long as the dog is comfortable at ease and in a relaxing state, you are doing the right thing. Right. Now, if the dog starts jumping all over the place and the dog says, goes away and, and it, it's like, okay, just let it go and try yeah. later. So with that said, the lighter the pressure, the better it will be. The right. dog doesn't need deep tissue. The dog doesn't need to be slapped around or anything yeah. to feel your touch, okay? So right. what I do, I touch, I start with very slow strokes very long slow strokes starting from the base of the head or the neck on the sides of the body with the hair the, the line of the hair never against the line of the hair because that is uncomfortable for them so this very slow this is a huge chunk of muscle they love being massaged there of course their hips going all the way down and I really don't touch the paws because this is another area the paws of the dog the paws of the dog this is where they have the sweat glands okay on ah, okay. the paw padding the paw padding is not a shoe the paws of the, the the padding of the paws of the dog is where their sweat glands are and it's a very very sensitive area so the more cognizant us humans are about that, about that fact, it's very important, especially that we are entering the summer months. It gets extremely hot. Here in Florida, we are already at 100 some more degrees with yeah. the humidity. And it's very dangerous for any walk dog to be walked on asphalt or anything that has to do with cement because the padding of their paws could be burnt and that's where their sweat glands are. So heat stroke could happen. So please, Watch out, everybody, and please be very aware of this. Very important. Going back to this very long, slow stroke, they absolutely love this. Going with the hairline all the way down to the paw and start again on the base of the head. 
and go all the way down. You don't have to go all the way to the center of their body because that is where their spine is. So this area is a very sensitive to touch area of the spine, especially if there's dogs that have, they have bony prominences that they're skinnier dogs. Yeah. That is something to be very aware of. And then of course, go to the other side of the dog. Same exact thing. Nice, slow, long strokes with the hairline very important you can do very very gentle compressions as well right. you can grab this and gentle compressions gentle compressions you can do it on the paws as well do gentle compressions going down and they all the way up remembering that the pressure should be close to none, especially if it's smaller breeds like Han, he is a yeah. small breed, definitely that. And if the dog doesn't like their, um, their tail to be touched, leave it alone. Mm -hmm. The tail of the dog is, there's a purpose for the tail of the dog and the tail of the dog is exclusively for language. The, ah. tail, of, the tail of the dog is an extra five to 15, flexible vertebrae it hardly has any muscle and is very sensitive to touch so the tail is not for play the tail is not for grabbing the tail is for grabbing just in the case of an emergency if the dog having a fight or something is going on then okay but otherwise this is the this is for language they have the tail is up watch out the tail is down they're fearful so it's exclusively for language so if your dog hey it's it's your dog if your dog is okay with you touching their tail then i wouldn't really grab and pull i would rather do compressions compressions very very light compressions or just very gently just touch the tail. And when I have massage, finally massage a dog's tail on my doggy clients, it's been that they've been my clients for a while. I don't yeah. go first thing to just go ahead and massage them because they can feel like I'm being too invasive on them. Yeah. And then since it's your doggy, you can massage their cheeks. This is their mastication muscles are right here. So you can massage here. But I would say to anybody and everybody, let go of this. Don't touch. Don't touch. Leave it alone or here. If your dog is okay with you touching their ears, then very gently, you can do some kneading here. Right. Or just going with always with the line of the hair, very important. So I hope you do this on your dogs because <laughs> they will absolutely love it. Thank you, Han. So <laughs> <laughs> That's a great demonstration. I yeah, love it. Thank you, thank you. Han loves it. He's very happy when, <laughs> when, when I massage him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is a uh, very you know it's a very simple you know this is the simplest form of the beginnings you know yeah. the principles of massaging a dog but they're very very powerful and any dog you can give you can give your dog so much more quality of life just by doing that very long slow stroke with the line of the hair anywhere that the dog feels comfortable and of course very light compressions they feel it and they love it absolutely mm -hmm. oh that's amazing mm -hmm. I love it I love it and I didn't know that about the tail like I know the tail was you know so they can they you know you could tell a lot of times that they you know they're happy fearful sad excited mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah but I didn't realize how I knew it was sensitive, but I didn't realize it was just yeah, vertebrae. Ex exclusive. Extremely, extremely sensitive. And that's why, you know, when, when I do um, canine massage demos, I make sh very, very sure to inform as many people as possible about the dog, the tail of the dog, because there is a lot of people, you know, I grew up in an environment that I had I had no awareness of this yeah. when I was younger, nothing. But now that I do, definitely is a huge mission of mine to inform as many people as possible that, you know, if the dog is not yours, 
don't touch their face and don't touch their tail because yeah. they are intimidated when they their tails are touched and it can mean i mean they're intimidated and they feel that they are invaded it's like it's like let's let's put it this way if a human someone that you don't know will come to you and say instead of shaking your hand or saying just hi Oh, hi. How are you doing? Oh, my God. Yeah. It's so, I'm so happy to meet you. It's like, dude, leave me alone and don't touch me. Exactly. It's the same, same exact thing is with the dog. And they are, I mean, they are feeling and they are emotional beings. And dogs are the reflection of their owners. So yeah. if their owners are stressed, the dog is going to be stressed. If the owner is happy, the dog is going to be happy and so on and so forth. So right. it's something to be... Take, really take on the consideration. I am working with this woman that she has two dachshunds and they they were abused, neglected, abandoned these dachshunds. And since she was the one that picked them up and gave him a home and gave him the love, they are fearful of losing her. And what happens, they are aggressive with anybody that comes close to this woman. Uh, so I am going to be teaching her the principles of canine massage therapy, but through a Zoom meeting because I went to meet them and they wanted to bite me and they were, they, they got really, really out there. And it's like, okay, yeah. let's find a way. And I think that the best way to go is we do a Zoom meeting. You have the dog on your lap with you and I will walk you through it. So we're going to yeah. get that going. So it's very, very helpful. It helps your animal. Anybody that is an animal lover, try to as much as you can to do this with your dogs because it's mu mutually beneficial for of course for the dog but the, for the human companion as well because you both will be in a calm state and that, what what better than that what yeah. better than that be in a calm state with your beloved pooch very important that is so adorable <laughs> so you could actually change their moods and change their their way of thinking and really be able to you know actually improve their behaviors by using canine uh, massage therapy also. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, you can. Because the moment that they go into a calm state, the moment that they're, they are receiving calm from you and they, that will, that's what they will manifest yeah. back. Yeah, definitely. They, I mean, every single dog that I have massage, I have massage many in, yeah. in my career the the report and the results are exactly the same the right. dog is in a calm state and they go out to potty after their their massage they go back inside and they just lay down and be chill for the rest of the afternoon most of the time i have two golden retrievers that i massage consistently and their dog groomer she will know when the dog has been massaged before she grooms them and yeah. when the dogs have not been massaged before she grooms them because they are all over the place when I haven't massaged them. But then when she comes in after I massage them, they are in a total calm state and it makes her job much easier. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's like a human being. When you go for a massage after the massage, you're completely relaxed. Absolutely. And your, your mind is kind of clear. You're just totally in a, in a different zone. Oh after. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it has everything to do with the chemicals of our bodies. Let's remember that dogs and us, we are mammals as well. They have chemicals in our bodies, just like we do. And what happens with massage therapy is that the, the stress hormone cortisol, the levels go down by 31% when you're receiving massage and the happy chemicals of our bodies, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins, the levels of these happy chemicals go up by 30%. So of course, cortisol goes down, the good chemicals go up. It's like, okay, this is like the perfect, perfect feeling. And that's why we are so like immersed in relaxation. Yeah. It's like, oh, I just want to go sit down and rest because that's the that's the beautiful effect of massage therapy, not only for us humans, but for dogs as well. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And you know, well, how many times a week do you suggest a massage for a, a, a dog? If it's your dog, you can massage your dog every single day if you like. Oh, okay. Every single day, you can you can be watching TV or resting a little bit, and if you have a laptop like like Han here, <laughs> you you just go ahead, 
long, slow strokes. Yeah. Long, slow stroke with the line of the hair. And we both calm down, definitely. Yeah. And then, of course, the compressions here. You can do some kneading on, on the neck area. But the compressions, they love the compressions and the long, slow strokes with the line of the hair. That is the most powerful stroke that I always start and finish my professional massages with my with my oh, canine really? clients. Yeah. Yeah. I do many other things, but that is for a professional massage therapist to do. But this, you know, these tools are super, super beneficial, super important. And it can really, really extend the life of the dog. It can bring them ease. They can put in them on ease. I mean, dogs that are competition dogs, they are in extremely stressful environments. Yeah. Dogs that are canine, canine dogs, canine police dogs that they are working all the time. Service dogs for our veterans. Yesterday yeah. was Memorial Day weekend. And if I have, I have massaged a few service dogs and the job that they do, it never ends they are 24 7 for their human companion and that's their job right. and it's a beautiful thing when the veteran and their dog have an even stronger bond through yeah. canine massage therapy it's beautiful and mutually beneficial it's amazing that is amazing that is mm -hmm. amazing I know yeah. like, like uh, my dogs, you know, I have my one Shih Tzu. She is very, very attached to me, but she, you know, I know that we're not the, a lot of dogs don't like when you touch the ears, but she'll let me go underneath her ears and rub mm -hmm. around her, her holes. And then she'll let me actually do, she'll do nose kisses with me. Oh, and so, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so amazing. Oh my God. I love that. Like that an is... Eskimo kiss, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Stacey. Yeah, well, definitely try massaging your Shih Tzu. I, I think she is going to love it. Absolutely. So if you had to like tell the audience and give them a couple of pointers about today's conversation about massage, you know, canine massage therapy and some tips and we went all over everything. What are some things you'd like to emphasize? Very important that when you are going to either choose a massage therapist for your dog or you massage your dog that you're that you are in a calm state and the best way to go into a calmer state is obviously is like very deep slow breathing three times that will help you calm down go into an environment make an environment where you and your dog are extremely comfortable, that there's no interruptions, that there's no loud TV, that there's no, no news, no programs that are not conducive to calm. Yeah. Always in a calm state. Dogs are very, very hypersensitive to smell. Mm -hmm. Not all scents are the best for the animal. So yeah. the less, and especially artificially scented, like, artificially scented candles those are not so good for your dog besides the fact that they're not good for us i will highly yes. recommend an aromatherapy diffuser and the best and the most the the universal and most harmless essential oil there is is lavender mm -hmm. so lavender is fantastic for calming down if you're in a, in a in a stressed out level your dog is stressed with you so a little bit of lavender will be tremendously beneficial for you and your dog and making sure that the scents are not powerful or pungent for you because if it's pungent for you is 20 times more pungent for your dog extremely extremely important but definitely being in a calm state being in a calm environment, it will be mutually beneficial for you, for your dog. If your dog is not up to it, that just wants to jump off, let the dog be and do it some other day. Because just like us humans, that some days it's like, okay, I will love a massage, but I'm not up to it today. Right. Same exact thing with your doggy companion, same exact thing. So be very aware and cognizant of your dog. And if your dog is not feeling well, definitely that tail and the ears, are they, they are for language. The ears are not only for the hearing, they're for language. If the ears right. are up, 
is one thing. If the ears are down, if the ears are all the way to the back, you know, the more you know about your dog, the better you will understand your dog. So yeah. get as informed as possible. They are so many good resources out there. American Kennel Club is an excellent, excellent platform to understand the breed of your dog because there's many breeds of dog. There's over 450 breeds of dogs right yeah. now. So very important, get informed about the breed of the dog. Very, very important. And if you are interested in having a dog, please get informed about their breed because that's when abandonment happens. That's when getting rid of the dog happens because the dog is pretty. The dog is cute when they're a puppy, but when they start growing up, that they start shedding, that they are, let's say, for example, a husky. Huskies, oh my God, my beloved huskies. I love them, but I will never have one because yeah. they are working animals. And what does a working animal do? They like to go to work. And if you have a job that you have to leave the dog at home, guess what? Your dog will destroy your house because they went to work. And of course, it'll cause a whole different bad scenarios that nobody needs to have. So definitely research the breed of your dog before you get that dog that you so very much want. And be very, very aware that the life of the dog doesn't go around. It doesn't go around you. Your life will go around the dog if you mean well to your dog. Okay. So that's very important. That's a hundred percent true. Those are very good points. And also like when you go look for a canine um, uh, massage therapy specialist, is there a certain things you should look for? Like, how do you know if you're going to get a good one versus a bad one? Like, is there certain things you need to keep an eye out for or questions you might want to ask before you get involved with someone who does it? In my honest opinion, as a human massage therapist and canine massage therapist, a good massage therapist will ask questions. Every single question is an important question. And to me, and this is, you know, over the years, I've been massaged by many people. And in my experience, the less questions that are asked from me, the more generic the massage is. Yeah. And the more meaningless the massage is. If you have a massage therapist that they will ask you questions, they'll ask you questions about your dog, that they will start observing the dog from the moment they see the dog observing their stance, their walk, the way they sit, the way they turn. It's it, it, that definitely makes all the difference in the world. And that is definitely the massage therapist that I will highly recommend for your dog. Right. Yeah. That's a very good point. I like that idea because, you know, sometimes you, you, you know, you don't know what to look for, but that's a very good point is, you know, one that asks a lot of questions. Oh, yeah. That are Absolutely. Be a really Absolutely. good one because they care oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. they want to find out what's going on so they could help you. Exactly, exactly. And and definitely, you know, the massage therapist that asks questions is the one that means no harm yeah. the most. That they only that we only want for the dog and their human to have the benefits of it, not to feel worse than before this all started. Yes. Yeah. The more questions people ask from you, that's the one to get. Yeah. I love it. Now, tell me about some of the services you provide so people know a little about you. Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Well, I am a wounded healer. My my website is www.woundedhealer.us. And under this umbrella, I provide services, of course, of I'm a licensed massage therapist and a certified canine massage therapist with 26 years combined experience. And I absolutely love what I do. It's a big honor for me to be that God gave me this gift to do. Mm -hmm. I am a fitness instructor for people and individuals 45 plus. I'm an Amazon bestselling book co-author. I'm a holistic life coach and I am a dancer. I've been retired for a few years, but I'm a dancer for over 30 years of experience experience wow yeah <laughs> you've done it very all happy. yeah <laughs> I love and of it. course I'm doing podcasting I'm a speaker as well so okay. yes I'm a speaker educator and I am a toastmaster too so I love it mm -hmm. oh I love it I love mm -hmm. it and tell everybody um your podcast name my podcast name is wounded healer as well so yeah I love it I mm -hmm. love it 
<laughs> this has been amazing. I, I learned a lot today because like, you know, I, I've heard of canine um, massage therapy for dogs, but I didn't really know a lot about it. And you've really provided us with a lot of great information and Thank you. ways to actually handle your dog because every dog is different. Every mm -hmm. dog, you know, has sensitivities and sometimes we're not aware of those sensitivities because we, you know, sometimes we think more on a human level and we have to think on a dog level. And Absolutely. Know, even though dogs are similar similar in a lot of ways they're also different in ways you know absolutely mm -hmm. so this has been great thank you so much for coming on the show and it's been great having you on and i can't wait till you come back and we can learn some more and it's just thank you so much this is thank you thank you thank you stacy thank you so much for having me oh you're very welcome you have a great day oh you too you too thank you